What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Everyday. This is going to be kind of a scale garage hangout video. It's got a few little odds and ends I need to do and nothing to really put into a video of its own. So we're going to take a look at a few things today. I've got some new things to show you. Uh, first off, I've got a bat safe box. Now I've, if you've been with the channel a while you know I was very reluctant to get into lipos. I didn't know, again, I mentioned it previously in another video, I'm not a big electronics guy. And I didn't know how all the LiPo stuff worked. It always seemed scary because of the discharge and the, the storage charges and all that. I didn't, yeah, wasn't for me. But I finally did it and I don't regret it because, of course, run times are ridiculous and the, the power you get, rigs are totally different on LiPo. So we had to do LiPo. But I've been using one of these little things to haul my batteries around now that I'm going places. I don't know how good this actually is. It's kind of a Kevlar looking material, but I mean, standard zipper, zipper. So I don't know if uh, that'd actually keep anything out. But the problem too with moving and going to these vents, I've got, this is where I kept my batteries. It turned into a tool tote and a battery tote. Not the safest thing to do with the LiPos. So down in USTE, Nick Barber of uh, RC Hobbies Orlando, the hobby shop to the stars as they say. He uh, hooked me up with one of these bat safe boxes, and these are made to, if the battery catches fire, it'll burn inside, only release a clean smoke, and uh, keep all the soot and all the actual fire contained inside. And uh, yeah, I didn't really know what it was, but he sent me one, because he said I didn't need to be carrying around <laughs> a janky battery pack from uh, eBay. So, it's kind of cool, it's kind of thing... You can mount your, have your charger set up. You can run your wires through and actually charge them inside the box. Uh, the top of it here is all vented. It's got some kind of mesh and filter and a lid. It is a very thick walled box. And uh, you can see there how that all works. It's very thick. So I don't have a whole lot of batteries in there yet. That's really, I'm only short one. I've got some of my FMS batteries. But that's really, with the LiPos, I don't need 100 batteries like we did with the old nickel metal stuff. But uh, yeah, these are pretty cool. It uh, retails for about 60 or 70 bucks, I think. But um, yeah, that RC Hobbies Orlando always has everything, man. They've got, it brings half his shop out to Ultimate Scale Truck Expo. And they've got, it, you can't find something that's been discontinued with RC four wheel drive forever. Holler at RC Hobbies Orlando, they may have it. <laughs> Maybe sitting on the shelf. He's got all kinds of stuff all the time. So big shout out to them for sending this out. And uh, Got a nice handle on it too, so I can just leave this in the bed of the truck when I go camping and keep all my batteries safe and out of the way. Especially right now, I've got everything I own in one room, so I definitely don't need any LiPo fires destroying my entire collection. But uh, looks like a pretty neat thing. I watched some videos on it. Um, I don't think the charging bracket will hold my charger. I've got that uh, Venom 80x2 something or another that <laughs> somebody gave me a couple years ago so it is pretty neat i think this will be good for all my travels big shout out to rc hobbies Orlando for taking care of me and uh make sure i don't burn down the house <laughs> i'll have a link below to them if you're interested in checking them out online they don't have much of an online store but you can always give them a holler and uh see if they've got something that nobody else has if you're looking for it so something a little different. I, I don't ever show basher kind of stuff on on the channel, and I don't really have much. I have a, a slash that I've had for a few years and done a few things to it. I think the last content we did on it was when I converted it to kind of converted it to a oval track car, just because I thought they looked cool. I don't have anywhere to race it or anything, but so feeling nostalgic. I'm back at home, you know, waiting to uh, build a studio and a shop and everything, staying with family, and I. I don't know why I wanted the stadium truck again. Back when I was in middle school and high school, I had an RC10 T2, and it was nothing. I'd never been a good driver. Got to go to a couple tracks and run practice laps and stuff on the weekends and stuff like that, but it was fun. I, I was really impressed, you know, coming from a Tamiya TA02 kit was the only hobby-grade car I had. So the next thing I had was that Team Associated T2, and it was so different. The layout of it, the, the engineering of it was different. All the materials were different. And man, I thought I was hot stuff back then having that 
That truck is unfortunately long gone. <clears throat> There's still some pieces of it floating around in my junk boxes that I used to have under my workbench. Uh, I, at one point, I actually cut the metal chassis and bent the tabs down and mounted all the suspension. Tried to build a monster truck out of it. We got wild before we were able to actually buy more RC cars and just trying to make things out of what I had even back then. But those the prices are insane. And uh, you know, I'd like to be that's one thing Nick from RC Hobbies Orlando, he's got quite a RC ten collection. And uh yeah, he's got some very valuable cars. But I was looking at some looking for a runner, you know, just something used that I could throw some newer electronics in and bash around the yard in just just for old time's sake. And man, like complete ratted out junk. T twos are hard to find. Uh yeah, the buggies are seem to be a lot more of them around the trucks. And they make a newer one, I can't remember, it's a T6 or something, but it comes pre-assembled, and it's like 350 bucks, and you still got to have electronics. I was like, I am not going to use it that much. It's just kind of a nostalgia thing. I want to get one and drive it around every now and then when I'm bored and I can't figure out anything to make videos about. I just go and drive an RC car and kind of get back into it, get back in the right mindset. So this is a little Losi Mini T 2.0. This was like 160 bucks, which... Yeah, I mean it's a little high, it's a little bit car, but it's actually it's actually pretty cool. It it screams nostalgia for me. It's just just like the old olden days. And I never had any Losi stuff. I was never uh, I was always team associated, I guess you could say. But I, I did some research and I asked everybody I know that's kind of into the industry and stuff, and like what what something cheap I could get. And it was there was a uh, Ascension buggies. I think they're twelfth or fourteenth scale or something associated. And they were a little bit more expensive, and I loved that little buggy. It had, like, the shark teeth and the army graphics, but this seemed like the best bang for the buck. This had a LiPo. This has a decent servo. It's got some aluminum stuff on it. It's built like an actual truck. The chassis is aluminum. The shocks are actually oil-filled. A lot of the stuff in this smaller scale, even down 128th scale stuff I was looking at, they're real cheap, but, man, they are just delicate. So I was like, this, this is a good compromise. So like I said, it was like 160 bucks, and I've driven it a few times. You can see it's pretty dirty, but man, it's it's a fun little truck. I don't. That's why I don't ever do content on these. Because what do you what do you say? I mean, I'm not gonna spend a fortune modifying this thing. I'm not gonna do a whole bunch of stuff to it. I mean, it's still brushed. It's not. There's no. I don't even know what if there's a brushless option for it, which oh, I would like to do because it's not very fast. But I thought it was pretty good. I was out driving in the backyard. It's two wheel drive. And it, you know, it, I've got real loose dirt, so I was having a difficult time trying to run a little course. I kept spinning out. And I got to thinking, like, okay, I need to go back to that mindset of being a kid like I used to be and actually learn how to drive because I'm not a very good driver. I was never a racer with the RC stuff. I mean, I was probably better back then than I am now. Anybody who's seen me run the, the vintage buggy races at USTE knows I am not a skilled RC driver. But... It's still fun to get out and bang around with, and it's slow enough that I won't break anything, and it's going to help me work on actually learning to drive, but it's good, cheap-ish fun for me trying to get back into uh, being a little kid in my head again. <laughs> I love how soft it is. It's set up so nice, and those bot truck bodies always look pretty cool. The big wing on there is great to hold the body clips. <laughs> but yeah, I don't even really know. I've never even had the battery out. It's a uh, 2S, 7.4. It's a neat little truck. But, like I said, there's no real content in it for this channel. Not what we're about. But just one of those little behind-the-scenes things. I do this for just nostalgia. But it's a lot of fun if you're looking for a little cheap basher. Something to consider. If they have a brushless version, you might go ahead and buy that. Save you money in the long run. <laughs> Talking about nostalgia, I... I've always loved the Tamiya touring car platforms. That's something I just, you know, that was the first thing I ever had as a kid. And I've been obsessed with them ever since. And now getting older, I'm obsessed with, like, the box art and stuff. When I was a kid, it was all, you know, painting slime or ooze on the sides and doing silly stuff. No fear stickers and all that. But uh, I went up there when I went to film the uh, behind the scenes at the 110 Rod Shop. I was stopped by a hobby shop I used to go to. And look around they always had a good selection of used stuff and they didn't fail this time 
So I've wanted one of these for a while. This is a Tamiya XV01. This is a kind of a different platform. It's belt driven, front engine, four wheel drive, and it was kind of a rally car. Long, long travel suspension. They had a few different variations of it. And uh, I just never got one. And they, they never had a body I was in love with that came with it. And uh, yeah, again, I was thinking back to my current residence. The yard, the dirt is very loose. Like a rally car would be good, but I've seen how much dirt and stuff has gotten on that little <clears throat> little Losey micro mini truck. I'm like, well, this is good because everything's enclosed in its own thing. The battery is accessed from the bottom on these. It's got its own compartment, so it might be a fun thing. So I had, I've got this used. I always see if there's a little room, wiggle room on the price. I got it for 130 bucks, which is not bad at all. It does appear to have ball bearings. It's got a little bit of dirt in it, but overall it's pretty clean. Um, I think one of the guys that worked there actually was selling it, so I couldn't turn it down. I, yeah, that's a pretty good price, and I don't really have plans for it yet. I've been kind of gathering stuff. I've got some Tamiya Motors. That I want, was curious what the difference are between the Sport Tune and the Torque Tune. I've never had many of those. I know most of the kits now come with one or the other. The Drift Cars, I think, come with the Sport. Some of the other ones come with the Torque, so... Yeah, figured one of those, and I got some cheap, cheap, cheap uh, little ESCs on eBay, but I didn't realize I don't have a servo for this. But, uh, yeah, just a neat little car. I mean, it's, it's like I said, there's a little bit of dirt here and there. Somebody did a rough job gluing the tires. But <laughs> this is a good little basher, and it, it's another platform for another possibly vintage Tamiya body because I love all those old rally car bodies. I've got a couple, the Celica and the Audi and some things like that that are... Real nice box art, driver quality bodies. But um, yeah, I couldn't pass that deal up. Love all the Tamiya stuff. So I also got to thinking, I got on eBay. I, I've been bad on eBay a lot lately. It's where I got these motors. It's like, I need a cheap basher body for this. Something just stupid, cheap, that's already painted. Because I, I really can't paint Lexan right now. And uh, yeah, I'm not really that good at painting Lexan. So I was like, I'll get one of these pre-painted bodies that's real cheap on eBay. And like, how bad could they be? They can be pretty bad. So I thought, a rally van, how cool would that be? I thought this was actually like, you know, a Honda minivan. But it's just kind of generic, and it's printed on the inside, so the, the stuff, the grill's crooked, but it's printed on the inside. There's not much you can do about it. It does look cool as like a drift car. I don't know about so much as a rally, but we might use it. It was like $20 shipped. And, uh, I mean, the wheel arches are cut. All I gotta do is poke some holes in it for the body post and uh, let her rip. But I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but I just thought that was hilarious because, I mean, how how bad could it be? It's probably about like what you'd expect. Definitely usable, but it's not, not gonna win any beauty contests with it. It doesn't look nearly as bad with some uh, drift wheel. These are some MST adjustable wheels a little bit wider in the back <laughs> it looks kind of cool so i don't know what the future holds for the the rally van but yeah, i just thought it was i would get one of those and see how bad it was and share it with y'all something i haven't done in a while I, i've got all my rigs out on a shelf so i have you know i just set bodies on things while i'm moving cars around and everything looks cool on the vintage to me a buggy chassis <laughs> like the sand drag look got the little round Skinnies on the front and the big paddle tires on the back. Even the minivan looks kind of cool. Wheelbase is off just a little bit, but <laughs> everything I stick on there, the Amigo fits that perfect. Looks freaking cool. Come on, Volkswagen Golf. Everything looks cool on there. Well, I think I may have found the body I want to use, but the body posts are in the wrong spot. But apparently they're reversible on this chassis. So I'm going to flip this other one around here. That may work out awesome. Just slide out. Flip it around, we'll see if this works. It'd be pretty cool. Alright. Got to make the holes in the body a little bit bigger in the front because these posts are a little more durable than the old stuff. And we'll right. see. I think that's perfect. This is a genuine Tamiya body. These are very hard to find. And this one is completely hammered junk. This was the one that came on the Tamiya FF01 that we just swapped over to the green Honda Civic body to bank my car from high school. It's got the air ride. I bought that FF01 with this body on it and this body was pretty beat up then. 
I got that for like next to nothing on eBay. And uh, we did the air ride, and that's that's part of the reason I wanted to redo the air ride was because they had to cut these giant holes in the hood to allow that to stick up a little bit so the body would set right. And uh, it was cool, but we fixed that. We got the struts tucked underneath the hood of that Honda and uh, re-engineered, and it looks pretty dang good. But I had so many people offer to buy this body. These are very hard to find, apparently. I've looked at another, trying to find one, and they're, yeah, I think there was one uh, in the box with the stickers and everything, and it was like four or five hundred dollars. It's like I don't like Volkswagens that much, especially this generation of the Golf. And this is a variant, you know, we never had, I don't think we had a V5, we had the, the GTIs like this, I think. I don't remember. I don't know. I wasn't into Volkswagens back then. But I think this is a good fit for that chassis. I got it setting pretty good, flipped those rear mounts around, and everything else is lined up. That's what's good about Tamiya stuff. And the front foam bumper on the chassis adds a lot of needed support here for the front because it's split in multiple places. We've got a tear in it over here. I mean, it's a great basher body. You can also see where whatever they painted the black inside with ate into the blue. So there's a different kind of non-compatible paint, apparently. So I think we got a good basher out of that. So we'll figure out which one of these motors. I mean, I think Rally Torque would be better. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know in the comments which one you would recommend. I gotta find me a cheap servo. Oh, here we go. RC four-wheel drive twister servo. And I've got a cheap ESC. These were like $10. It's a 1040. Looks like the old Axial ones on eBay. But the reason I got picked up a couple of them is they were dirt cheap. And they already have Dean's connector on them. So that made me made me happy. What does this say? WP1040 brushed waterproof. 2 to 3S LiPo. Uh, 6 volt, 2 amp BEC. Yeah. That'll do for this. <laughs> So, now i got to find a receiver we can build a rally car. My plans are foiled for this for today. I don't have a pinion gear. <laughs> um, if I do have any, they're buried in a box somewhere. So, I'm sure it's probably the same mesh and everything as all the Tamiya touring cars and stuff. But, went ahead and ordered one on eBay. So, yeah, we'll have to wait on this project. We'll give it its own video. We can throw us a cheap rally car together and have some fun in our loose dirt train. One more little project on this video before we wrap it up. C2X, uh, we talked about it a couple videos ago. That one, I think it's the Panhard mount, seemed kind of weak, so I've got an RC four-wheel drive upper Panhard and upper link mount for the D44 axle. One solid aluminum piece, it's basically a whole truss with the aluminum end that sticks up for the Panhard. I'm gonna swap that out real quick and uh, yeah that should alleviate any little stress that we were having on that part. insurance on the front of this thing. You can see the Panhard link sticking up there. It's kind of out in the wind on its own so any added rigidity in there would be handy. So this replaces the truss and that Panhard mount with one machine piece. So pretty good little upgrade. I think it was, you know, it was shipping everything. That was the only thing I bought. It was about uh, 20 bucks or so. Uh, the part number on that is Z-S2018. RC four-wheel drive upper panhard link mount for D44 axles. 
Just a little added beef for the C2X. But I think I'm gonna wrap this one up here, guys. We've got a lot of stuff done. Appreciate y'all hanging out in the scale garage today. And uh, yeah, comment below with any questions or uh, whatever. So keep it scale, guys. I will see y'all next time.